always there to uh, proportion, which is to say, deal out proportionally. The pressure? Yeah, the pressure. Right, exactly. So it keeps the rear end from locking up when the bed is empty, and it also keeps the um, um, back brakes from not working at all. So, uh, there's a couple of proportioning valves. Um, hey, uh, point it off, just so I can have an understanding of it, or see what I'm doing. But, um, it maintains open, it closes when the panic pressure is applied to it, so uh, it could eliminate the brake, the, um, um, uh, a lock on your brakes, right? Which uh, eliminates the whole brake. So I guess. What do you mean you guess? I don't like that it's prison hot ball. Well, shit, I haven't even thought about this stuff in years. But here's the important part. When the car is in a panic stop, we have a shift in the center of gravity, right? All the weight moves forward. Mm -hmm. Which is why when we take the wheels off a car, we always see that it that it take, you'll change the front brakes three times before you change the rear brakes, right? And in a panic stop, that percentage gets even more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that because is that because it cancels out the vapor going to the back? Mm -hmm. And then now you're 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 competing pretty much just have nothing but front brake? Yeah, because otherwise these would just skid. Yeah. So it's like completely get cutting out the brake system on that, the proportion about? Pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Unless the thing's really loaded down. Yeah. Because if it, if the thing's really loaded down, then you need the braking um, performance of the back wheels. Yeah. Okay, so so then um uh, the, what would pulse what would pulse it would be the hydraulic uh, the accumulator? The pulse would be an ABS. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Like, oh, we're, yeah. first we're finishing our yeah. brakes though. Before we're gonna we finish go. off normal brakes first, and then we're gonna go to ABS. Okay. Okay, the metering valve is there in a disc and drum connect uh, combination, right? Yes. Why? Because the piston on a caliper only has a very, very small distance to travel before it applies, right? Whereas a drum brake has a long distance to apply before, to travel before it applies, right? Mm -hmm. So if we didn't have a metering valve, what would happen is the disc brakes would be applying all the time and the drum brakes would never apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So we got some experienced guys doing my alignment? Yeah. That's all I'm worried about. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the metering valve is for a distant drum combination. Now, if you go to um, a all four-wheel disc or something like that, you're going to have to change the parts of your braking system, right? So the, you know, don't have to do that too. I, I heard, well, not really heard because I kind of read it, but, but I kind of got my stuff up and we confirm it. Four, four disc, four disc. Four-wheel disc. Four-wheel yeah. disc. Would they have a meter about? I don't think so. I, I, no. That's all the, right. the, yeah, I wouldn't throw them. Right, because they'd all apply at the same time. So they all apply yeah. at the same time. But it would have a proportion about. Probably, yes. Which is a proportion about either way, it's still the place there to prevent from wheel lock. Yeah, and the back. It's Although if it has ABS, you know, that all that has been taken care around. of. So. Problem is, you know, I took breaks quite a while ago. And the problem is, if you don't see a whole bunch of every different make and model of car, you're not going to know what's there and what's, yeah. you know, sometimes there. Yeah, that's how, that's how I probably feel confused sometimes. Because well, I look at one right. car and then I'll be like, but... Right, and that's why but it's that's important. That's the experience kicks in. So that's why it's important that teach, automotive teachers stay current in the field. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I like to bring a whole bunch of different cars in all the time, because you need to have experience on all these different cars to see, you know, who's doing what. So my point was that if you have a proportioning valve problem, what's it going to look like? Proportioning valve problem. You're going you to have a proportioning valve problem. A lot of lock. A lot of wheels, kid. Where? In your rear. Excellent. Or the other direction. Or the other direction is never going to apply the back brakes, right? Yeah. 
and you're going to be going 30,000 miles, and the, you're going to take the drums yeah. off like we done on the Cadillac, and it looks like it was just done yesterday. Yeah? You're going to have a complete skid all over your car. Yeah. Okay, what about if you got a bad metering valve? A metering valve? Yeah. And your problems are going to be applied first, or you might have a... Drums may be the only thing that applies. Remember yeah, what dropping. kills these valves, because these are rel relatively small valves, what kills these valves is little bits of rust. How do you get little bits of rust in your brake system? Water contamination. Water contamination. I got to tell you, water contamination is the number one enemy of your brake system. You got to keep your brake fluid clean. And nobody does. Now, how can you tell if you got a lot of water contamination in your brake system? Check it. Different color. Oh, you have a lot of water? Pipes? Number one is because your brake fluid is going to be dirty. And that dirt is actually rust. Yeah? Yes. But you know, that's because your brake. What are your brake lines going to be made of? Steel. How often? Very often, because you're going to make my brass. All brass. the time. All the time? Yeah. Yeah, brass would not handle the pressure. What well, brass would hurt? Stainless steel. Yeah, stainless steel or steel. Now, here's the exception, and here's what they're going to ask you. Pay attention. They're going to ask you about rubber brake hoses. Now, why do we use rubber brake hoses? Okay, first of all, steel brake hose. Steel is the best material, it's cheap, it's strong, but what? Rust. Corrosive. And more importantly, it doesn't flex, right? right. So we're going to run steel brake lines down the frame until we get to the part that has to go up and down. And well, that's going to be made of what? Rubber. Well, rubber. rubber. Good. Well, it can bend it, the steel, but it cannot um, flex. Flex. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now what they're, what they're going to ask you about on the um, on the AIC exam is they're going to ask you two things about this. They're going to say number one, what causes rubber brake hoses to get swollen? Nope. What causes rubber brake hoses to get swollen is petroleum products in the brake system. Petroleum products? Yeah. In the brake system. You're never supposed to have any oil or anything like that in the brake system. Because all that rubber will react to the oil and it will swell. You know how a, a radiator hose, if it gets really oily, it starts to get, yeah. Right. Kind of like your foot does. If, if you, if, yeah. Yeah. The number one cause is petroleum products. And if you ever get any petroleum products in your brake system, you got to replace all the rubber in your brake system. Um, because, after all, the, the rubber will react to the uh, oil tend to swell, and that can cause all kinds of problems. Okay, that's the first question they're going to ask you, is what happens if your brake lines swell. Now here's the thing you need to understand. Your brake line looks like this. So if it swells, is it going to get bigger on the outside? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. If it swells, what's going to happen to the inside? Well. Going to get smaller. The pressure is going to <coughs> nope. Tell me what's going to happen to the hose if I get petroleum inside my brake line. What's going to happen to the size of the hole on the inside? Small. It's going to get smaller. Good. It's going to get smaller. Now, think of the pressures that happen in a brake system. 3,000 psi. If there's a little bit of a hole and you put 3,000 psi, is fluid going to get through? Yes. Absolutely. 3,000 PSI is a lot. In fact, you may see more than that in a brake system. Especially if you've got an analog brakes, it'll go up to like 20,000 PSI. Now here's the thing. Incidentally, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is that what makes your blood pressure go high? What? When you eat too many chicharrones? Yep. Yes. Your arteries. That clogged. is correct. The same arteries. thing that's going to make you a good mechanic is going to make you understand how the human body works. Yeah? Because what happens is when you eat too many chicharrones, you get, how do you say fat? Grasa. 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 You get grasa in your arterios? Yeah. Arteria. Arteria? Arteria. Uh -huh. And it makes the hole smaller yeah. so that your heart has to push harder to get the blood through it, and that's what gives you high blood pressure. What's the problem with high blood pressure, Ruben? Your heart stops. Your heart is working harder, right? And you only got so many beats in your heart. Yeah. Yeah? Don't say nothing. 
So my point was, <laughs> you read my mind, wait. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the difference between knowing and doing, my friend. So my point was, here's what you need to understand. Now you're going to tell me, now you're going to tell me, I, pressure is what applies the drum brake, mm -hmm. but what retracts it? Your, your, your springs. This Return spring. springs, right? Return springs. springs. Good. Okay. Uh, pressure applies your piston in your caliper, but what brings it back? What what, what retracts it? Return you don't have return springs in the your seal. caliper. All your caliper? The seal. What? The, the seal. seal. Yeah, the seal goes well, like this, and then it pulls it back. Well, I always think about the, the seal and also the movement of the disc. Okay, it's a seal, but but the problem is, this is the question they're going to ask you. Yeah, I have the problem idea. is, if this thing swells shut, you're still going to be able to blast 3,000 psi through it to apply the brake. But what happens when you take your foot off? No, that, that other side still has the pressure, which is still maintaining. It. Why? Because there's a small hole and there's no... Because it can't generate enough pressure to push through that small hole now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good. Side, this side will be Good. happy because... Good. 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 So what's your symptom? What's your problem going to be? You're going to have a rough break pedal? Nope. Okay. You're, you're, you're lying slow. You're going to have a lock out of it. Right? Is it going to lock up on you? Or is it going to stick? Could you sort that please? <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't had the it's approval. Uh, you're, you're, you're. All the pressure is going to be stuck in there, so that means your pad first is going to get being stuck too. Right? Stuck applied. St applied. They call yeah. that brake drag. Yeah. That uh -huh. is, yeah. And that it does come from your brake line. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So what are your symptoms? Now, but, but I understand why now it, it comes from there. Because now, now you're explaining now there's less pressure. So it could, yeah, and that's why it's dragging because the uh -huh. pressure is So going. what's your symptoms going to be? Your symptoms going to be brake dust. going to be Good. Brake, uh, uneven brake pad wear. That is correct. And um, the one you're going to notice. It's going to pull to the... To the <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> you're going to get all kinds of brake dust all over your wheel, yes? Because your brakes applied all the time. Number two, you're going to get uneven pad wear because this brake won't retract and this one does, but you won't notice that until you take it apart. What you're really going to notice is when you take your hands off the wheel, the thing is going to go towards the... To the side of the brake. From. Side. To the side where it's dragging. Yes, Even sir. if it's a line, it still do that? Pardon? Even if it's a line? Exactly, which is why what we do when we have a pull is we check the alignment first to make sure that it's not a brake problem. Right? Because if it's pulling like this and it's and the alignment is perfect, we know it's not the alignment. It's the brakes. It's gotta be something else. Could be brakes or it could be an accident. I'm gonna go out here because they're on the wrong screen. I don't know if it kill someone. Well, this is going to be good. Oh, get there. I know. <laughs> get there. If he's choking somebody, tell him. Where is he? What happens if...